Meet the Redmi A3, the third generation Redmi device that packs a punch without breaking the bank at just $100 or 116,000 naira. With its eye catching design, Android 14, and a camera setup you can't miss, this phone looks pretty good. But does all this make the device a worthy buy? Stick around and let's find out. Let's start with what you get in the box. You find the device itself, a 10 watt charging brick, and a USB-C cable. It's worth to note that Techno, Redmi, and Infinix are the only brand that still keep a charging brick in the box. For the design of the Redmi A3, unlike the Galaxy A05, we still get a fingerprint scanner, which adds a layer of security. On the back, you notice a distinct halo design housing dual camera setup, you get a plastic back for the blue and the black variant and a leather finish for the green. This is something of Infinix playbook. One notable feature is the mono speaker placed weirdly on the top of this phone alongside with a 3.5mm jack. On the left, you find the SIM tray while the volume and the power button is located on the right hand side for easy access. Additionally, the USB-C port can be found in the bottom. Now let's talk about the screen. From the first generation, which is the A1, the Redmi A series has always had a U-notch at the top, but most of us would wish they give a whole punch display. For now, I guess we're sticking with the U-notch. Let's talk about the display of the Redmi A3. It's a 720p 6.71 inch LCD screen which is pretty good considering the price you're paying. Plus, they've thrown in Glorilla Glass 3 to keep it safe from scratches and minor bump. So while the screen itself is nice, just keep in mind that the performance might not always be top notch due to the chipset. For the performance, the A3 comes with the Helio G36 chipset, which was made last year. The chipset is good in saving power, but it's not the fastest when it comes to getting things done. In fact, it scored 147k on Antutu benchmark, which is one of the lowest scores I've seen this year. Now, if you're into gaming, you can still play popular games like Call of Duty on this phone, but you might need to dial it down on the graphics to get a smooth experience. You get low graphic settings and high frame rates, but the gaming experience is still good. As for the RAM of the Redmi A3, it comes with a 3GB, 4GB and a 6GB option. And it's enough for everyday stuff. The phone generally feels responsive, but if you ask me, 8GB RAM would have been perfect for this. Especially for running apps smoothly at the same time. For the camera setup of the Redmi A3, on the back you get an 8MP main camera along with a 0.8MP auxiliary lens. And for selfie, there's a 5MP front camera. When it comes to picture quality, this device is not mind-blowing. Photos from this camera tend to look uninspiring, especially in terms of details and color accuracy. Portrait mode is okay, but nothing to write home about. And if you're trying to snap shots in low light, using the night mode, be prepared to get a little noise in your photos. Selfies are alright, but they are not turning heads. It's safe to say the camera is in the star feature of this device. Video-wise, you can shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is decent enough for casual recording. Overall, the picture quality is pretty average for this price point. For sound, the device comes with a mono speaker that delivers a decent audio output. While it may not be the loudest speaker out there, it offers satisfactory sound for everyday use. One interesting thing to note is that the speaker is positioned at the top of the phone. This placement may seem off at first, but it actually works in favor of gamers. Since the speaker isn't at the bottom where your hands will cover it during gameplay, the sound remains clear and immersive while gaming. For the software experience of the Redmi A3, straight out of the box, you find a device running on Android 14 Go Edition, which is a lighter version of the Android 14 operating system. Despite being a streamlined version, it comes packed with all the essential features you expect from Android 14. Now, in terms of the interface, Navigating through the device feels smooth and responsive. It's worth noting that at this price point, Redmi and Samsung are the only few brands offering devices with Android 14, which is a big plus for those looking for the latest software experience without breaking the bank. For the battery and the charging capability of Redmi A3, first, we've got a sizable 5000mAh packed inside this device, coupled with the support of 10 watt fast charging. You're looking at a phone that can keep up with your daily demands without constantly needing to be plugged. The battery life on this device is definitely the highlight. With its battery capacity, you can expect to go through a full day if you're a heavy or light user without worrying about charging this device. Now, as usual, pros and cons before I do my conclusion. Pro number one, 
the design it's amazing it's futuristic it looks premium plus i like that halo design that houses the camera it's really cool and the leather version the green leather version i haven't gotten a hold on that but from the pictures i saw and the videos wow it's it's so cool pro number two affordability we are in times where everything is really really pricey entry and mid-range phones are really pricey especially in nigeria because naira is dumping so seeing a device for this price point that it's actually good design wise and has some features it's really really great to see pro number three android 14. now it's very hard to see android 14 on this price point especially when they're trying to budget and make sure everything comes out the right price so even though it's under 14 go edition it's actually cool to see it on a mid-range or an entry device and my final pro Corning gorilla glass 3. i think this is the only entry device that has Corning gorilla glass at least a protection from scratches and bumps so kudos to redmi on this one now for the cons con number one the chipset is quite sluggish 147k on answer to benchmark score that is not a good thing and it's even the last year's chipset so i actually expected it to be better but then again, budgeting, so maybe. And my final con, the camera, it's mediocre. I am sorry, I can't hold back. You can't even get a decent photo on it. I saw 8 megapixels, I was like, okay, maybe the chipset can actually make it bump up a little, but it was what I expected. <laughs> Pictures are average, it's not good for low light, but I know for this price point, you're looking for just a device that can make calls, long life battery, and you can just enjoy multimedia, so. What can I say? <laughs> so my conclusion, is this value for your money? I will say a big yes. It's not the best entry device, but value for your money it is. If you are using the A2, this is a very good upgrade for you. The screen, the design, it makes you feel like you are <laughs> using a more premium device. The battery too is amazing. My only complaint is the chipset, but for this price point, you have to lose some. <laughs> like there's a lot of wins here. Screen design what else again battery like come on a hundred dollars you can't get better than this anyways <laughs> tell me what you think about my review like share drop a comment let me know the last device you want me to review anyways i'll see you guys in the next one